Hey guys, welcome. This is Jen Frost with Faith and Fabric. And today we're going to be working on a really special project that's near and dear um, to me. It's a little bit personal of a project too, so I'm excited to have you join me. Today we're going to be making a weighted blanket, um, a weighted quilt, if you will, for those who are suffering from fibromyalgia. Um, there's a little bit backstory on this one. Uh, you guys can always skip ahead too if you would like. There's in the comments below, you'll see there's different chapters um, for this video. It's a little bit longer of a video, so you can uh, adjust to where you need to go based on that. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about fibromyalgia and why this is important to me. About three years ago, my family and I were traveling and I started to uh, cramp up. I was getting cramps in my glutes <laughs> and in my legs. And I'm a runner and I just figured it was from running and then sitting all day in the car like I mentioned we were traveling and I, I didn't really think too much about it. Went to a doctor, got a cortisone shot, didn't really help too much. For me, the symptoms continued to progress beyond just muscle cramping. Um, there was just intense pain and burning and all kinds of symptoms and I didn't know what was going on. We got multiple MRIs, we got all kinds of testing. This is very common and uh, the, the testing part is common. And uh, about a year later, they, they came out with the formal diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Now, let's talk a little bit about what, what fibro is here. So fibromyalgia is a neurological disorder. Now that's a working diagnosis. Um, it affects two to 4% of just the US population, which means overall that's 8 million people living with it just in the US alone. While it affects both men and women, women make up over 90% of those diagnosed and the average age of onset is 40. Now what's interesting there is I'm a female and I was diagnosed at 40. So basically my doctor called it uh, quite a textbook case. Now there's several working theories on what causes fibromyalgia, including abnormal functioning in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal gland, the inability to suppress cortisol, defects in the central nervous system, alterations in both the ascending and descending pain pathways, and so many more. You know, there's not a uh, formal test to say, yep, you have this, no, you don't, as there are with other diseases. It's not something that's gonna show up on blood work. So it's, it's, it's more of um, a disease of elimination, if you will. You know, you get tested for all those main things that are out there, and if they can't find it, then they're able to um, quite, quite comfortably make the diagnosis that this is what it is. So, you know, as mentioned, fibromyalgia is a very painful, painful disorder. And for me, that was a humbling experience. I've been involved in sports my whole life. And I think there was a piece of me that always felt that, gosh, you have a headache, like you go take a Tylenol and you're better. You pull something, you have, you know, a hamstring injury, you go to physical therapy, you recover and then you're better. And I don't think I ever really appreciated or understood or had the sympathy for people who would wake up and say, I hurt today and I hurt yesterday and I've been hurting every day for months, for weeks, for years until I got this. And I have grown to understand and develop that empathy and that, um, that humility that, that it is possible to have something physically hurt every moment of every day for years. And, and that's, that, that's hard. <laughs> That's hard, to, um, that's hard to deal with when you're that person. Um, that's hard for that person's family to always have to adjust to uh, what that person is feeling that day. If I'm having a good day or a bad day, um, you know, my, I, I, I need more support, I need more help from my family. So it's not a disease that just affects the person that's dealing with it. It's a disease that really affects everyone around them. And, and I think that's why it's so important to have a support network. So I'm in a support network. Um, I'm in a really great Facebook group actually for those suffering from fibromyalgia. Now, a couple months ago, I posed a question to the group and I said, hey, you know, how would you pictorially describe your fibromyalgia? Because I had hoped to make, you know, some fabrics out of it in order to use for this, this um, weighted quilt we're gonna make. And the response was phenomenal. There was over a hundred people that replied with some really neat ideas of how they pictorially described what fibromyalgia felt like to them. So what I did is I took all of their suggestions and I wrote them all out and then I tried to group them together and everything seemed to come into one of four groups. So I wanna show you here what, what those groupings look like and how they translated into the designs that you'll see in the fabric. The first fabric is called the disease or the symptoms. 
This fabric shows the unending questions by the question mark, the way it slows you down with the ball and chain, the many medications that you try to alleviate the pain shown with the pills and pill bottle, all the doctor's appointments in medical charts, the burning pain with fire, the numbness that you'll feel with ice, the sharp nerve pain with needles, the insomnia with sheep jumping over a clock and other images which really show what we feel when we're suffering from the disease. I chose gray for this color because it really shows a bit of that despair that you have when your symptoms are at their worst. The second fabric shows the neurological pain that comes with this disease. Your nerves fire, causing painful muscle spasms and contractions. The gray from the first fabric appears in this print along with purple, which is the color of those suffering from fibromyalgia in terms of um, the traditional ribbons you'll see, as well as some bright green that appears and pops where the nerves are firing. The third fabric shows the tangled mess that this disease really is. The brain fog is real and it feels like such a struggle to sort through the jumbled mess inside your head each day. The tangled web of unending questions, changing symptoms and varying outcomes is shown in this tangled print using those same greens, purples and grays that coordinate with the previous two prints. The last print shows the hope that we each have, the hope of pain-free days, the hope of mental clarity and the hope of healing. There's so much hope involved. This print plays off the same purple tones in the purple ribbon, again, the color representing fibromyalgia, and includes bits of gray and pops of brilliant green. The white background stands in a stark contrast to the gray of the disease print, further showing the bright hope that we all have. Butterflies fill this space too, transformed by the hope that we each feel. So let's take a look at how those look in fabrics. So um, the fabric comes on a one yard print and I've got that here to show you. So normally when you make a weighted blanket, you're going to be making pockets that your weighted beads will go into. Um, with these, you'll see this prints on a one yard, um, a one yard, uh, one yard panel. And you'll have all of those fabrics on here already designed in those four inch uh, pockets. If I bring this a little closer, you can see here. Here's all those different designs uh, coming printed on the panel for you, making it very, very easy to show to sew. And we'll show you that in a minute. Now for the back color fabric, I went with the neurons. I just, I love the way that these, um, that these turned out and to me. This really represents so much of the disease. So you'll see here, I have um, a full yard of, of the neuron fabric with that, that, that gorgeous purple with a little bit of the gray and then the pops of green where, um, where the neurons are firing. So uh, this will become the backing of the fabric. So those are two of the, the items you'll need in order to make this um, quilt with us today. The third item you're gonna need obviously are your weight pellets. So, whew, that's heavy. Here's my weighted pellets. Um, I'm gonna put a link to this in the comments below. Um, I got a 10 pound bag for me. So uh, what I wanna do now is walk you guys through how you're gonna calculate how much weight you need based on your body size. Let's talk about calculating the weight for your blanket. The first step you're going to do is figure out how much is needed. So if you are roughly 120 pounds, you would divide that to take 10% of that. And so you would need a 12 pound bag. Um, that's how you can determine on average how much weight you want. Now you can always adjust this calculation, whether you want a little bit heavier of a blanket or a little bit lighter of a blanket. The second calculation you'll need to figure out is how much of your pellets you'll be adding to each pocket. So if you're making a one yard blanket, that yard has a total of 42 pockets inside the blanket once you've finished sewing. So you would take those 42 pockets and you would divide that by 12. So if I would have my 12 pounds of my, my pellets that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna divide that by 42 pockets and I'm going to end up with about a little over a quarter pound um, for each one of my pockets. Now, obviously, if you are making the two yard uh, version, um, you're gonna have double the amount of pockets you would have 84 pockets that you would need to fill. So you would just adjust your calculation um, as needed. In that case, you would end up with about um, a 14.14 pounds per pocket. But we'll be using this model today. Um, so we're gonna be putting in just over a quarter pound per pocket. 
So now you've got your materials and you know how much weighted pellets you need. Now a note on those pellets, you definitely want to use um, with the, I'm saying definitely here, but you, you really stay away from using food. Uh, now I know you can use rice or you can use beans, they're obviously less expensive, but you can't wash them because you think about if you put rice or you put beans in your washing machine, they're just going to inflate, they're going to get gross over time, they're going to get moldy. So I would definitely recommend if you're going through the effort of creating one of these blankets that you just go ahead and you just purchase like uh, the poly beads. They're made from um, usually recycled plastic, which is great for the environment and they'll work a lot better in your washing machine. You won't have to worry as much about them um, like you would if it was a food product that could go bad. So let's get started in making our blanket. Now there's a link below to a post that has two different ways to make this blanket. Uh, the first is a more traditional weighted blanket. And that would be where you're just basically taking your blanket here and you're going to sew all the way down on each one of these um, columns. You're gonna sew around the edges and you're gonna be filling them just step by step and then sewing it closed all the way around. So your, your blanket is gonna end up looking a little bit like that. Um, it's a great alternative. What I'm gonna be doing with this one is making it a little bit more like a quilt. Now we are not putting batting in it. Um, the reason for not putting batting inside is it's going to with the weighted pellets that you have in there, it makes the batting get all jumbled up and chunky feeling, it's not good. Um, what's gonna make this more like a quilt though is I'm gonna be adding a bright green binding to play off the green tones in here to help pick those up more. So that's the version we'll be taking a look at here in this, in this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to be trimming away most of the white fabric on both the panel that we have for the front and if you purchased the custom fabric, the panel for the back. Uh, now, a note, if you purchased more than one panel, as mentioned, this is a yard of fabric. I'll stand back here so you can see. Um, this is a yard of fabric widthwise, so it's not super long. This makes a really good blanket just for throwing around you over your legs. Um, if you want a full body blanket, you're going to want to purchase two yards of this. Now, it will only come in individual one yard panels. So if you have purchased two yards, your first step is actually going to be to sew your first yard to your second yard. And you're gonna do that just by lining up the bottom of your first panel with the top of your second panel. You're gonna sew those together and then open them up to make one long continuous yard. And you're not even gonna see that seam because we're gonna be sewing back over that seam as we make those individual pockets. So it's going to become seamless. <laughs> you like that one? You won't even notice that it's there. Um, for purposes of this demonstration today, and for me, I just wanted a smaller blanket. I didn't want a full size one. So I'll be making just a one yard size. So let's head over to the cutting table and we're gonna get started first by trimming off all of these white lines. So let's go ahead by starting to trim off this white uh, um, extra fabric here on the edge of this custom fabric. Now we will be wanting to leave about a quarter of an inch because that's going to be our allowance. Um, I'm going to leave just a slight bit more um, just knowing that there's the weight of the beads, I'm going to actually leave, you know, almost a half of an inch and we're just going to come and cut this off all the way. Now, if you are using, you know, your own fabrics already from home and you don't have an allowance, you'll just want to um, trim either just slightly above that yard mark. You, obviously, if this is a yard of usable fabric, there's that extra edge that we'll have here. Um, again, if, if you have just a one yard fabric um, from home that you're using, you're going to be just fine you'll just be uh, making your blocks slightly smaller. So you'll see these blocks actually finish at six inches. So my blocks will be six inches, little pockets. That's going to hold my beads. Um, you'll just adjust your pockets to be, you know, just under six inches because you won't have that little bit of extra allowance that we'll be sewing. So I'm gonna speed this up while we get some cutting done here and we'll meet you back at the end. have a nice pile of your extra white trimmings. You can just set those aside. You're not going to need those anymore. Um, obviously you can always recycle those. You can use them to stuff a, a doll. You're, you're free to do with those what you choose. Uh, the next step is going to be taking your front panel and your back panel, whichever fabrics you're using, and you're going to be pinning them together. Um, again, this is where using these pre-printed fabrics comes great because they're already going to be the same size. 
and you're going to be putting your um, your your wrong sides together so that way when mine pins you'll see this is going to be the front of my quilt this is going to be the back so my my the right side of my fabrics is facing out it'll line up nice and perfectly here and you're just going to be pinning this every six to eight inches so your fabrics stay together um, one tip of advice is you want to make sure you're not putting the pins where the lines are you're going to need to sew there so as you're pinning your fabric um, make sure you put your pins kind of maybe on alternating squares in the center of those squares and then we'll be removing those as we go through so as a preview of what's to come we'll put our pins in and then we're going to start stitching all around the border and down our columns let's get started okay so we'll start pinning so the first thing you're going to do is mentioned you've got your your backing fabric face down you've got your top fabric face up and you're just going to line those edges up and you're going to pin those in place. And this is just gonna to be to help keep those fabrics from moving around too much on you as you're sewing. So I've got my first block here lined up across the top, across the side. Um, I can even see, it's probably harder for you on camera, but I can even see, because I'm using this nice dark fabric as the background, um, I can even see through the white to where that is, which really is another plus of uh, using the, 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 the pre-made fabrics. So I'm just gonna stick a pin here in the middle and then we're gonna go ahead and just add some pins throughout to help keep this, um, keep the fabrics in place as we stuff our blanket. together you may find that even though you have um, what should be exactly a one yard panel and a second one yard panel thinking they should come together perfectly you may find that like mine it doesn't line up exactly and that's often because of the um, the dyes that are in the fabric so there are obviously two very very different feels to these um, the back side that I'm using it has a ton of fabric dye on it you know to get those rich purples there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ink in there whereas the front has a lot more white space. So what often happens is uh, that when that fabric dies, it ever so slightly is gonna shrink your fabric. So you may end up with a situation like I've got here, I'll bring this nice and close, where your, um, your backing fabric is going to be just a little bit smaller when you line up those corners than your front fabric. So that's okay. Um, what we're gonna be doing is, since your front fabric is just, again, that skosh skosh bigger, um, we've gone and I've, I've centered my, my backing fabric um, in the middle of that, that front fabric. And now when I sew, I'm going to be using the white borders on the back um, of my backing as my guidelines. So let's go over to the machine and I'll show you how we're going to now go ahead and put our stitches in. Um, basically, the first thing you're going to do, just to talk through it, you're going to be going and you're going to be making um, the letter U. Think of it that way. You're going to be going all the way around across the bottom, up the side, then you're gonna flip it over and we'll be sewing some very deep columns. We'll just be going down these lines to create some very deep pockets that we're gonna slowly start filling. So as you can see, I've got my fabric in place. Um, again, I'm gonna be sewing here. I'll zoom out for a second here. Um, I've got my fabric reversed. So this is actually the front and you'll see I've got the top of the blanket up here. Uh, the bottom is sitting in my lap. Um, and I'm sewing mine in reverse because if yours is like mine, your fabric that has more um, more print on it might be slightly smaller. You'll see I've almost got a full quarter of an inch difference here um, than your fabric that uh, has a bit more of the, the white on it because that won't shrink as much. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going ahead and I'm gonna back stitch and then come all the way down the side, across the bottom and then across the other side. Um, and you'll see that go through here. Uh, I'll speed it up so it, it won't take too long. But we're gonna be basically making the letter U. Um, you wanna be sure to backstitch at, um, at each spot. So we'll start this together here. So again, I'm just gonna go forward here a little bit. Backstitch to lock that in place. And then here's my letter U. Um, I am using a super bright green thread. Um, I'm gonna alternate between green thread and purple thread. Um, again, I just wanna play up some of these really bright, bold colors. Um, that are gonna be in this little quilt that we're making here. Um, and I thought the green would be a lot of fun just to show show some contrast. Um, I'm also gonna go, as I mentioned, with some uh, green binding on here, which I think is just gonna look super, super cool. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit for you and then I will meet you at the end once we make our large letter U. So we have our quilt. Um, I'm going to call this a quilt again as I know quilts usually have three layers with the batting in there. Um, in this case, I'm counting our poly beads as our third layer. So especially since we're going to be doing some really pretty binding on this. Um, I wanted to show you uh, a tip on this. So if your fabric, as mentioned, like mine, has um, you're using these pre-printed fabrics, one of them is probably going to shrink a bit more. Um, you want to make sure you're picking up the print in your stitching. So there's two ways to have done this. The first is obviously in the very beginning, you could have gone through and trimmed, um, right when you did your pinning, you could have trimmed uh, beforehand a quarter of an inch all the way around, you know, double checked both sides to make sure that uh, the white was all um, encapsulated within that quarter inch line. Um, I chose to just sew first and then uh, come back and pick up any extra in the seam. Again, I'm trying to make sure that I can keep my lines um, as minimal as possible with in terms of losing that six inch by six inch block. I didn't want to have to cut anything off um, it's a lot easier to rip out stitches than it is to, you know, sew back on a mistake if I, if I accidentally trim too much. So two options there for you. You can do whichever you prefer, but I want to show you what I did on mine. So you'll see again, here's where my shrinkage was. You can see on the back, I'm going right along that, that white line, but on the front, you'll see, I've really picked up the color part where the print is. Um, and again, that's because that front fabric really shrunk a lot more or the back fabric really shrunk a lot more. So that's why it's eating into it on the front. Now with the way things shrink, it my fabric shrunk more widthwise as opposed to lengthwise. So on the lengthwise portion, um, I needed to come back through and I wanted to make sure that I've picked up all the white, all the, all the white fabric on my front is all on one side of that, uh, that stitch line that I've made. So I did have uh, one little spot right here. I'm gonna pull this very close to the corner. You'll see, I went back and I added a second stitch line just a little bit right there. Um, because there was this white. So this is my original one. And here's the new one I just added. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this to the cutting table. And now you are going to trim as well. We'll do it together. We're going to use this most inner line all the way around as our quarter inch cut line. And so now we're going to trim off any excess one more time. Let's head over to the table and we'll cut together. Okay, we're going to start trimming it up. So you'll see here is my stitch line. And I'm just going to trim off again because I want to have exactly a quarter of an inch above that because at the very end, that'll be where our binding goes. So I'm going to trim that excess off. And again, you could have um, you could have done this before you stitched for me. I just, you know, I stitched first and then I'm going to trim. Um, it really it really makes no difference how you want to do this. Uh, so we'll just get this little bit of trimming done here. And then we are going to start sewing the pockets for our quilt. Need to replace my rotary blade here. So I'm gonna speed this up um, and then we will go ahead and meet back at the machine for sewing our pockets. Okay, so we're back at the machine. We've got all of our trimming done. So now we're gonna be sewing these very, very long vertical pockets. Um, you'll see this is the top of my quilt. If I take it out here for a sec, this is where it's open. So it's like one giant um, sleeping bag. <laughs> and we're gonna be making those pockets. So you're just gonna start um, up in the white portion. Again, you're gonna be able, this will all be hidden by when we come back and do our binding. Um, and you're just gonna be back stitching. Obviously you wanna definitely put a back stitch in. We're just gonna be going all the way down to the bottom. So we'll do this first one together here. So I'll get my first in there, we'll back stitch, and we're just gonna go all the way down um, to make our pockets. And you'll see what this will do is create, at least for us, the columns that we're going to need that we're as we start to fill in with all of our little poly beads. And you'll see I'm still using that bright green thread. Um, I'm gonna be doing, I think my, my vertical pockets are probably gonna go in this green, and then we'll do, um, I think I might do the horizontal in purple just to mix it up and add, add some fun little pops of color. And you'll see this too is where you're gonna get a little bit more of that, that quilted effect. 
because you know with quilting um, it, you, you make like a patchwork often when you're you're sewing your pieces of fabric together um, and this is going to make it look like a, a patchwork quilt that you've created out of your weight blanket as opposed to just having you know one solid fabric on the front and one solid fabric on the back we'll finish up here getting towards the bottom I was getting a little hung up there on my pins um, gotta watch out for those pins they're good to have in there to keep your fabrics together, but they get stuck on your machine a bit. So I'm gonna come, you'll see here, to the very bottom of my column. I'm gonna come right to the edge. I'm gonna back stitch a little bit, staying within that white space. Again, that'll get all hidden by my binding. We'll cut it, and then we are good to go. So I'm gonna speed it up a bit while we go ahead and complete all the extra columns. our beads in our um, our weighted quilt. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab that kitchen scale and you're going to grab a measuring cup and your your bag. Now we've already done that calculation that shows us how much weight we're going to be putting in each um, in each container. Now I went ahead and I converted mine over to ounces because that's how my I'm using a kitchen scale and that's how mine reads is how many ounces. So um, you know, they, my, my weight, as we looked at earlier, was roughly 12 pounds of weight for my body weight. Um, I, they don't make 12 pound bags, I got a 10 pound bag. So I readjusted the calculation a little bit uh, to figure out how many ounces I would need per bag. So uh, this was uh, basically 160 ounces um, of, of weight. I've got 48 blocks, so that's about three little 3.3 ounces per square. So. I've put my measuring cup on my scale and I have zeroed it out. So right now, it's not counting the measuring cup as weight. You definitely wanna make sure you do that step first. And now we're gonna just measure and see how many um, how many poly beads we need to get to that 3.3. So we'll go ahead and we'll fill it up most of the way and just see how close we are there. Um, that's at four, so a little too much there. Um, I'm not gonna hold it to like the exact amount. I wanna try, you know, try to get close to 3.3. Three. Um, there's 3.1. Three, three. Nailed it. So uh, we're going to first take our beads now and you're just going to start filling them in row by row. So just to make this easier for you, I recommend you start on one side and you always consistently work to the other. Get those pins out too, by the way, if you haven't taken your pins out. Um, but I'm going to start just like I read, you know, from left to right. So I'm going to start in my left pocket here. Uh, again, get those pins out if you haven't taken them out already. And I'm going to open up my first pocket here and I'm just going to dump my beads directly in. Now it's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit. Um, I do not have a funnel. If you have a funnel at home, I would definitely suggest grabbing your funnel. Um, it's gonna make it easier to not spill. Um, see here, dump all those guys in there. And we'll just let those sink to the very bottom. You can already feel the weight this blanket's gaining just in that little bit of three ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill up all my remaining pockets. Uh, you'll see there's, uh, I think, seven rows on here total, regardless of your length. And then I'll meet you back at the sewing machine and we're gonna start sewing those rows closed. And at that point, it's just gonna become a repetitive process of filling your columns, sewing that row closed, filling the next column, sewing that row closed and going all the way across, okay? We'll see you at the sewing machine after we're done filling all of our pockets. Okay, we are ready to put our first row on. Now, um, here in my lap, uh, you see I've got, I've got the bulk of my blanket in my lap here. And this is probably gonna be one of the more tricky parts because you need to be able to get your, your weighted pocket with all of those beads in there um, all the way over because you don't wanna sew those beads. Um, that would definitely not be good for your, um, for your needle. And you want to make sure that obviously they're not falling out on the other end either. So I'm gonna come over here to my machine, get my settings here, I do a quick back stitch. Um, and I am going to so right along this line. So basically what we're doing now is we filled the, the, our first seven columns. We've got our beads in here and we're gonna close this up. So I'm gonna pop this in fast motion just so we can, we can speed things along here and you can see how that goes. But you'll see this is basically our goal is just to close uh, this whole first row. Okay, 
okay, our first row is done. You can, you can hear them in there. And those beads are all secure because now they've been enclosed in that U that we made, and now they are enclosed in that first row. Um, I wanted to show you the back just so you can get a feel for how this is looking here too. I'm gonna bring this nice and close. You'll see here's that really cool neon green thread. I love how it's showing up on there. Um, it's pulling out some of the green of the neurons. And then also on the front, because these fabrics were designed to work together, you've got some of the green here in the hope block with the butterflies and the hearts. And you've also got that same vibrant green in kind of that just jumbled, tangled mess um, that it really is, right? So uh, what we're gonna do then is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna keep repeating that process. You're gonna go ahead and keep repeating that process too. So you're just gonna go now back to your scale. You're gonna weigh out each one of your pockets, sew a row. Go back to your scale, weigh out each of the pockets, sew a row. And you're gonna go all the way to the top. So when you get to your very last row, it's gonna be absolutely no different. You'll have that stitch line here. You're gonna weigh each of your pockets and you're just gonna come across here now and you're gonna sew this closed right along that white line that we made, okay? So let's take half an hour, 20 minutes, however long that takes you. Fill your pockets up and we'll meet back here when we're all done. Well, after a lot of sewing, hopefully all of your poly beads are in your new quilt and not on the floor because that's where a lot of mine ended up. That top row was a doozy, wasn't it? But I'm really glad we got all of our poly beads sewn into all of our 42 pockets or um, 84 pockets if you're making one that's two yards long. So now it's time to get started on our binding. So um, for binding, I've chosen a green color. Um, I'm gonna be going with something that's super bright um, again, I want to really play off a lot of those green tones. I think it's going to be really pretty to do it in this. So I'm going to pop a calculation over here um, on how you actually calculate your binding. You're basically going to take your total perimeter of your quilt and you're going to add eight inches. So um, you can go ahead and you can measure your quilt. You know, again, depending on whether you use one yard or two yards, it's going to vary slightly. Then you're going to add eight inches and that eight inches is for the, the corners where you're going to be doing some overlap and then where we're going to cinch it together. So um, that's the total length of binding you'll need. Um, I have cut my strips into two inch strips. You know, you can go as small as two inches because again, you're not going to have any batting in there that you need to account for some extra width of your, um, where, where your binding is going to go. Um, you can make them up to, you know, two and a half inches if you want a real thick look of your binding on the back. That's totally up to you. So um, I'm using a lot of scrap fabric. You'll see I had a lot of just, you know, it's almost like 15 inch pieces that I've trimmed now into these two inch strips. So I'm going to go ahead and attach them together. So that's what I'm going to show you now is how you're going to actually attach your binding. Um, if you have to um, piece strips together to get to that total length because there's no fabric that's that long. Um, so let's go take a look at how we're going to put that together. Then we'll press it together and then we'll go ahead and we'll start attaching it to our quilt. Okay, so I've got my first piece of uh, binding cut. Again, that's two inches wide. I'm going to go with a little bit more of a narrow binding. And then here's my second strip and I need to start attaching my strips together because I have um, some pretty short strips here that I'm working with. So the way you attach your strips together is you're gonna be putting them um, at a right angle with the right side of fabric together. So this is the right side of my fabric, this is the wrong. I'm gonna take the right side of this fabric and I'm gonna lay it over it at a right angle. And you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit of space so that way I can kind of see this little point right here and this little point right here. Now you can mark yours if you want. Um, if you're more comfortable um, taking a chalk line and or a, if you've got a fabric pen, you can mark those. Um, I am a bit more of an eyeballer. So I'm just gonna eyeball mine and I'm just gonna come and you don't have to back stitch. Um, I'm just gonna do a straight stitch all the way down. Again, from that one corner to the other corner. Pop out there, we'll cut that. And then you'll see you can come back and you're going to trim this off about a quarter of an inch up. I've got my little tiny scissors here, but we'll do a quick trim on that. And now, discard your scraps, and now you'll see my, my piecing is attached. Now you'll have these little tails. You can just trim your tails off. And by putting this on an angle, what that does is it makes a much more secure, um, a secure thread line here, so your seam is less likely to rip. It's also going to reduce the bulk. If you had sewn your, your, your two strips just traditionally across, like if you just fold them in, in, in half and sewed across the top, kind of like this. If you had sewn this way, when you open that up and now you try to fold that, you're gonna have a lot of bulk right here. And so doing it on the angle um, also reduces the bulk. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna continue attaching all of my strips. You can go ahead and continue attaching all of your strips and we'll meet up at the pressing table. Next up is creating the, the fold and the binding. So you're going to take your binding and you're going to fold it wrong sides together so your right sides appear on top. Just line those edges up and then you're going to gently press those down. Um, it's actually going to be pretty easy here. This should be probably the easiest thing you've done on your on your quilt so far. There's no, there's no beads to worry about on this one. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit and we'll continue pressing our fabrics. Once your binding is pressed, we're now going to attach it to the side of our little, our little weighted quilt here. Um, first, you're going to want to really though get as many of those beads as you can. You'll see I'm kind of shaking mine down so that way the beads themselves are down here because you want to be able to attach the top of your binding. Um, or you want to be able to attach your binding to your quilt without getting those beads stuck. So we're going to start here. Um, I have two blocks here. This is my first block that you can't see and here's the second block right here. Um, I'm, this is my third. Again, this is going down the side of my quilt. So I'm gonna leave a tail here. I've got um, probably about six inches and I'm just gonna leave that open here. I'll slide it down so you can see. So here's my corner. Um, here's block number two and I'm just putting this to line up here on number two and I'm gonna actually start pinning here at block number three because this is where my sewing is. Now when you pin, you wanna pin it so that um, if this is your opening, that you're putting seam, Here's the, the edge of your raw seam, raw, edge raw seam, edge of raw seam. So that way the part where the fold is, is actually coming in because eventually what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this around and stitch it on the back, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and pin this on. Um, I'm using just little um, binding clips. I think they're a little easier than, uh, than dealing with pins. So um, I'll stick a link to these in the comments so you can see them too. And I'm just gonna do one side. So the reason you wanna pin it on here beforehand is because when you're trying, especially with the weight, because this blanket now is getting awkward and heavy, um, you wanna make sure that you're not stretching your fabrics out. So I'll just keep sliding this down so you can see it here. So I've got a nice even length, and I'm gonna come down to my corner and I'm gonna put one more little binder clip or binding clip right there on the corner. So we'll head over to the machine now and start sewing. All right, we've got our quilt underneath our sewing machine. Again, you'll see I still have my loose tail. You don't wanna start at the end. And again, that's probably about eight or nine inches loose that I've got um, hanging up top. We're gonna to be using that at the end. Um, actually, probably closer to about seven inches um, that I've got of a tail up here. So about seven inches down, I'm gonna start and I've got my little quarter inch mark right here. So I'm gonna be sewing in from the quarter inch. Put that foot down. And then as always, you're gonna start with a back stitch. Um, that's going to make sure it doesn't fall out and then you're just going to keep that consistent quarter inch all the way down remove your binder clips out of the way and like mine you're probably going to have to do a couple little shake shakes <laughs> to get those um to get those little pellets out of the way i think that's probably going to be the most challenging part you have um, in, in, in attaching your binding is making sure you don't sew over those plastic pellets. Um, the other thing you're gonna be wanting to be very aware of as you do this is making sure that you uh, lift. You'll see I've got, um, it's kind of hard to see it. Let me move the camera here. I've got one hand down here on the bottom of my quilt and I'm actually holding the weight. You know, normally when you're sewing, your presser foot is able to help um, pull the fabric through. Obviously, there is no way that your foot is going to be able to pull, you know, on mine now, you know, 10 pounds of, of weight underneath and that drag is going to get stuck. So I'm using my, my right hand um, to uh, carefully guide the fabric um, and almost not push it. You know, you're still not pushing it, but you're just making sure that there's no drag, if you will, as you as you attach your binding. So I'm going to go ahead and keep attaching my binding. Um, you can go ahead and attach yours and we'll meet up as we get towards the end. Okay, I'm getting close to the corner and so I wanted to show you here how we're gonna finish our corner off. So what you're gonna do is because we're using a quarter inch seam all the way, we're gonna stop about a quarter of an inch from the edge right here. 
Um, now, this is probably easier for you because you've already sewn your quarter inch, um, you know, our, our letter U, if you remember, way, way, way back when from the very beginning. So if you could just kind of peel back and you can see where that corner is, you're going to be stopping. Now, you are sewing just inside because you remember we did a scant quarter inch here, and now we're sewing a full quarter inch. So we are stitching right along the outside of this line. But, you, you know, just in your mind, kind of judge when you get to right about there, you're going to stop. So you'll see I'll come forward here. When I get close to that point, about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to do one more there. We'll stop. You're going to do a back stitch to hold it in place. Come forward again and cut. Now you don't do that big of a back stitch. Um, <laughs> I think I stepped on my pedal a little hard there. I will pull it forward. Okay, so now we're going to make our mitered corner. So we'll try to keep my hands out of the camera's way here too much. But you're basically going to, here, we'll zoom out a bit. There we go. Uh, you're basically going to take your corner now and you're going to fold it up. So you're going to have a nice right angle here. So there's your right angle and you're going to just kind of press that, press that seam and then you're gonna fold it back down. Now that fold is still underneath. You'll see if I peel this back, you can still see um, there's that triangle that we folded up. You're just gonna be taking and folding it down here. So now the top is going to be even as if it came straight across. And then this goes down the side. So I'm gonna just take one of my little um, binding clips here and I'm gonna pop it on the side to hold this in place. And I'm gonna put one up here to hold this in place. And now we're going to go back and you're just going to take your binding clips, pin them all the way down here, the, all the way down the side of your quilt, and you're going to continue sewing. Now, one thing to note is when you start this stitch coming down this side, you're going to start right at the corner here. You don't have to do that quarter inch. Um, you don't have to come in a quarter inch. You're just going to start right at the corner, a quarter inch allowance, and you're going to stitch all the way down this side. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, go ahead and attach. You've got this side, you've got the rest of the other side, you've got the third side, and then we'll meet back up once we get to the far corner to go ahead and um, attach our binding together. Okay, I've arrived at my last corner here and I wanted to show you how we're gonna do that because you'll see this side doesn't need to be completely sewn because right here is where we started our binding. So here's that that roughly you know seven inch tail. And now I'm gonna come down on this side and what I'm gonna do is on this side, I'm just going to make my corner you know, that, that fold, the fold, and I'm only gonna come down about three inches. And then we're gonna head over to the cutting table and I'm gonna show you how we're going to actually measure and cut our um, binding and then attach it together and then continue down the seam. So you'll see here, I'll just start sewing a little bit, back stitch, and I'm just gonna come down, oops, stuck on a little seed there. Those little seeds are a lot of work, aren't they? I'm just going to come down about three inches um, and then I'm going to back stitch again. I'm going to cut my thread. So let's head over here and I'm going to show you how we can, um, we are going to attach these two pieces together to make one complete piece of binding that we'll then attach. So you have the top of your quilt here. You'll see this is where we just stopped sewing on the machine and we have our other tail here. So here's our two attach points. It's kind of hard to get them both in the camera, but here's our lower. And here's our upper and we've got a nice span in here um, you know about 10 to 12 inches and that 10 to 12 inch space is how we're going to um, have a little bit more room to attach the binding itself so you'll see I've got my first tail here and I've got my second tail here so you want to make this as smooth and even as possible first so I shook my beads out and I'm just going to overlap my tails now um, based on the width of your binding again mine was two inches you're going to measure down two inches and cut your tail. So you see I've got my, my first tail here and I'm just going to mark two inches. You can actually use my cutting table right here. So here's an inch, here's an inch. Um, again, we'll just double check it here, two inches. And we're gonna cut this tail right at that two inch mark. The next thing we're going to do is actually put these together and attach them. So if you remember back at the couple steps ago when we had been sewing our binding together, we would put right sides together. We're gonna to be doing that exact same step again. So you're gonna open up your first tail. You're gonna open up your second tail. You're going to put right sides together. You're gonna to wanna to pin this. Um, this is gonna be incredibly challenging to do without a pin. So you're gonna pin over the top. Um, I like to put a second pin on the bottom and we're gonna be sewing right in the middle there to connect those. Um, and then you'll see basically what this will do is when you, you stitch this way, 
imagine a seam there, it's going to fold and it's going to give you one nice piece that you can sew all the way down. So we'll take this back over to the machine and we're going to sew just from this corner to this corner as we attach the binding. So again, you'll be able to see here's uh, that tail that we just pinned over at the, over at the cutting table and I just brought it over. Um, I'm gonna start right at that top corner and I'm gonna sew again. If you want to mark your chalk line here or use a fabric marker, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> you guys you guys know by now, I tend to um, sew like I cook with just a pinch and a splash, um, not perfect measurements. This is one of those things where I can get by without a direct measurement on. So I'm just gonna come straight down. Um, again, making sure that you've got, I've got, you can't see it, but I've got my right hand on the bottom here holding the weight of that quilt so it doesn't impact uh, the feed dog's trying to pull and I'm going to sew straight to that bottom corner, come off and then we'll clip it. And then now what you can do is you'll see if we open this up, dun, 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 dun. obviously we'll trim this, but we now have one beautiful piece of completed binding that can stitch all the way out, around here. Let me back this out a little bit so you can see here. So this now will fit all the way down. So you're just going to go ahead, you're going to cut this off, and then you're going to stitch your quilt closed. Okay, so we have now, we're almost to the end. We have the first round of binding on, not first round, but you know, the first step of the binding done. So your binding is attached on the front of your, your quilt. So now what you can do is you're going to take your fabric here, um, you're going to trim your corners. You see, I went ahead and I just trimmed off a little bit of that white fabric. It's kind of hard to see because you are literally taking off, I mean, this tiny little bit just to help make the corner a little bit um, less bulky. So now what you can do, uh, you have a couple options. So normally what I like to do is um, when I'm making a regular quilt is I'll press my binding open and that'll give you a nice sharp seam here. Now this is going to depend on your comfort with getting your iron close to your beads. Now these are plastic and they will melt. So um, I'm probably not going to press mine. I'm just going to finger press it open, you know, kind of give it that nice um, little bit of a tug and then just kind of use my fingernail to straighten it out. I don't want to risk melting anything. Uh, plus a lot of these fabrics, because the print is heavy on them and they have not been washed. I didn't wash mine beforehand. Um, the, the iron tends to not just, you know, glide as smoothly. So personal preference. So you're going to either iron press or finger press your uh, seams open and then you're going to take this and you're going to start to roll it. So you take your binding, I'll bring it nice and close here to the camera. You've got your binding right here, right here, and you're going to fold it over to the edge and then you're just going to start hand sewing. Now you have the option, you can either hand sew or you can machine sew, that's totally up to you. Um, obviously it might be a little bit quicker if you machine sew, although, you know, the, these are sometimes a little tough to be pushing through the machine. Um, again, totally your choice. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to hand sew mine. So just a basic little, you know, almost like a, a hidden stitch rear, uh, to, to, to go through this. And I'll show you how that looks in a minute. Um, if you are choosing to machine sew yours, go for it. You will be done. This is the very last step as we make our blankets. So if you're hand sewing, the first thing we want to do is get our quilters knot. Now, quilters knots are a great way to make that first knot on your, with your needle and thread before you start sewing. So to do that, you're going to find the end of your thread. You'll see here's mine in green, and you're just going to hold that against your pointer finger. Um, you're then going to take your needle and you're going to make a cross. So you'll see I've got just the loose little tail of the thread here, and I've got my needle over it, and I'm going to pinch that cross closed. Now I'm going to take the other side of that tail, and I'm going to wrap it um, three times. So one, two three around my needle and I'm going to kind of scrunch that um, those wraps into my thumb so now my thumb is holding on to those as well and you're just going to pull your needle thread you might have to jiggle that a little bit and as you pull this through I've got a lot of thread here I hope it doesn't get tangled on me there we go um, as you pull that through now those will stay and you'll have a perfect little knot so now you've got your little quilters knot we're gonna start sewing our, our blanket here. So um, I'm gonna come through right about here. That'll give me a nice spot to, to bury that knot. And now I am basically just going to go through, ooh, I've got a little knot here now. Um, I'm basically just gonna go through and start burying my stitch. So I'm gonna fold this over. And you'll see I, I have, um, I, I tucked mine in a little bit further than that quarter inch line, which is why I've got some extra space. I just wanted to add some extra bulk to my binding, you know, kind of pretending I've actually got batting in there. 
Um, I'm gonna fold this over so that way my stitch lines are hidden. And I'm gonna just come through here very gently. So now you'll see what I'm doing is I'm actually sticking my needle through this tunnel of fabric. Um, not far, just a tiny little bit. And then I'm gonna come out just enough to pick up some fabric. And then I'm gonna go right back into that little tunnel. And you're just going to repeat this process all the way around your quilt. So I'm gonna let you guys get to your sewing and we'll meet you again at the end. So here we are the next day. So I finished sewing the binding on last night and I wanted to show you how beautiful this looks and how heavy this is. <laughs> so I said mine's about 10 pounds and you can see how amazing it looks with that green binding. So I'm gonna come back here first so you can kind of see how the binding itself is picked up in the fabric. You've got the green of the fabrics really resonating so well with this bright green and the back looks awesome too. So you, with that dark purple of the nerves on the background and that little spots of green wherever they're firing is picked up in the same green border. So if you all bring it a little closer so you can see how this turned out and I love it. I'm so happy with it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed making your weighted blanket. I hope that whether it's for you or for someone you know that's suffering from fibro, that it just brightens their day and brings a smile to his or her face. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Um, it is definitely a journey that we are all on, um, whether you are a family member or a friend or you are suffering yourself. Uh, may we all just continue to, you know, take things one day at a time and to find peace with what we've been given. Thank you so much for joining me to make this blanket. If you found this helpful, give it us a like. And if you'd like to continue learning some more fun sewing tips, go ahead and subscribe and we will see you in the next video. Take care.